Welcome. Today we are going to talk about the call of Abram. So we just got done with the Tower of Babel. And so in Genesis chapter 11 is where we'll pick up. There's a whole bunch of uh, uh, more genealogy and lineage stuff from Genesis chapter 11, verse 10 through 26. We won't read all that. What's kind of the summary? Uh, Noah has his sons, and from Shem's line, we get all the way to a guy named Abram. And so let's read Genesis chapter 11, verse 27. It says, this is the account of Terah's family line. So this is somebody from that line of, uh, from the line of Shem. So that kind of goes down to a few different people. And so Terah is the a father of Abram. We see that Terah became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran became the father of of Lot. And so we'll see a few different uh, main people to kind of keep track of. Uh, one of them is Abram and then uh, who becomes Abraham. So uh, spoiler alert, but uh, so that's who that is. And then also Lot. Lot is Abram's nephew. And so we'll also keep track of him a little bit. Uh, verse 28, while his father Terah was still alive, Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans in the land of his birth. Abram and Nahor both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai. Uh, so this is uh, later renamed Sarah. Um, at least I pronounce it Sarai. I don't know exactly how you pronounce that, but uh, that's the that's the name before she gets renamed. And the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah. She was the daughter of Haran, the father of both Milcah and Iscah. Now Sarai was childless because she was not able to conceive. So remember those three people, Abram, Sarai, and Lot. And so now verse 30 is really, really important. Verse Sarai was childless because she was not able to conceive. Uh, and so now verse 31, Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, son of Aran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram. And together they set out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Uh, and so now we have uh, verse 31 where uh, Terah and his son Abram and kind of the whole like family line here is kind of going from Ur and going to Canaan, but they stop in Haran. They came to Haran. They settled there. And while they're in Haran, then God calls Abram, and that's how we get to Genesis chapter 12. We read verse 1. The Lord had said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. So he's still with his father at that time, and God is calling him away then to a new land. And then verse 2, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. And so uh, they, uh, so now they're going to go on this journey. God is calling them, and remember when you pair chapter 12, verse 2 with Genesis chapter 11, verse 30, you see something really interesting, which is that Sarai was childless because she was not able to conceive, yet God gives Abram this promise, I will make you into a great nation. Now, we're talking about absolutely polar opposite things. The difference between not being able to conceive, you know, even one child and then making it into a great nation are just completely opposite ideas. And so... I wonder what, you know, like Abram was thinking exactly when he was told this. Whatever it was, it seems that he did indeed have faith for this promise, even though his current reality absolutely spoke something so much different. He still had the faith to go ahead and say yes. And so that's an absolutely amazing thing. Uh, the Lord continues in verse 3, I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Verse 4, so Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. So now important to reference because in this time period in Genesis, you know, there's some of those people that lived like 900 years old, whatever. Uh, at this time now, they were they're living uh, not quite so long. Uh, in verse 32 of Genesis chapter 11, it said, uh, that Abram's father lived 205 years. And so that that is going significantly down. So uh, 75 would have been super young uh, when you're talking about people that are living 900 years old. But now we're still talking about somebody that is that is starting to get fairly old here uh, as, uh, as they aren't living to that crazy, crazy age now. So they set out uh, verse 5, he took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan. 
and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at Shechem, and that time the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. And so uh, Abram, you know, arrives there, and the Lord appears to Abram and said, I'm going to give you this land, and an altar is built there. Uh, to your offspring, I will give this land, and so Abram uh, is able to is able to get there, and so uh, really uh, quite an amazing thing. We'll continue to track this as things go along, because then uh, you know there's going to be a famine, and uh, you know Abram kind of continues to travel, and he goes to Egypt, and there's a whole bunch of different stuff there that we'll talk about. But man, if we can answer the call like Abram did, if we can do that, I think something really amazing can happen in our lives even if it doesn't look like it's quite right, even if it's maybe the opposite of our current reality, let's believe God when he gives us that promise and answer the call in faith. So let's pray and close this video out. Lord God, I just thank you uh, for this amazing story. And I just pray that you would help us, Lord God, if there's somebody listening here that has been called to do something that you have given them some kind of promise, whatever it is, Lord God, I just pray that you would give them the faith also to be able to believe it and then the courage to be able to carry it out, whatever it is, Lord God, we just thank you and praise you and pray blessing on this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.